the blind people, they get baptized and then they go to a church and then the people say, oh, we're going to pick you up at nine o'clock and never show up. So they're no. not really accepted within the church as being able to um, give, be productive members of the church. And they are productive members. I mean, they, they can get up and sing special music. They can read the Bible, you know, whatever. And, and that's what's discouraging is, is a lot of our people um, are not accepted. I, I'll give you one example of, of one of our members. She was baptized and the pastor came to me and said, she doesn't know anything about the church and I refuse to take her into membership. And that person has never come to camp or anything ever again. So it's very sad. Yeah, it is very sad. Two twin, about twins that came to church, they were both blind. And after they got baptized, they brought the CNI dog to church. And the people told them, no, you can't bring dogs to church. That's, a, you know, that's really bad because there's guide dogs are uh, trained and uh, they go anywhere that the blind person goes. When, uh, 2013 actually, Christian Record um, in Canada um, basically went out and uh, each uh, conference was supposed to take over the blind camps and everything. But Ontario Conference was the only one that really embraced not only the camp, but the compassionate ministry portion of it all together. And it's still the only one. And then as we kept a meeting um, every month, um, it got to the point where when the conference took over, with a Pastor Sargent and Pastor Edwards, um, we became inaugurated as a fellowship underneath the um, umbrella of the Ontario Conference Seventh-day Adventist Church. The Hope Vision Fellowship is very necessary. People with vision loss is a significant section or significant swath of, of the population of Ontario. And we as a church have the responsibility to take the gospel to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. And so we recognize that Braille is a language. I think it's going on our 12th year that um, it was with Christian Record Services and we would have our camp program and everything. And a lot of the campers had said that they, they really wanted to do something besides just the camp because that was once a year where we would get together. So that was when we decided to um, start a monthly program where we would get together and, and have it on a Sabbath and, and we would um, have a fellowship meal and do just whatever, you know. Um, so it started out basically at the request of the campers. You don't really want to have a full segregated group of the blind where it's just a group for blind people one, every, every week. So once a month is great for us because it helps people to, you know, get out and socialize and volunteers are also then willing to come and help out because it's that one church service a month where they get to see their blind friends or they get to see even each other or they just get to help out and have a church service as well as help out. We recognize that the gospel is not finished anywhere until it is finished everywhere and that we must not leave anyone behind. October 2016, it was organized as and recognized as an official congregation of the Ontario Conference. I really do love the Adventist movement and so I really enjoy coming to Hope Fellowship because I get to experience that you know, blind friendly atmosphere, be with other people. So I've been coming since 2007. I love how Adventists usually will say, all right, uh, here, your food, your veggies are at your right, your potatoes are at, you know, on the top of the plate, you know, that kind of thing. I love that about the Adventist church. Mostly people are really good with um, helping us and um, 
you know, coming and sitting and talking with us and treating us more or less like equals, accepting our talents, I love that about, and Hope Fellowship tries to do that. They also, and they encourage regular Adventist churches to do that too. We hope more people, not only blind people, get interested and want to come and join us, but we hope more sighted people as well will take the ministry over and, and be able to, you know, minister to the mind because we consider this a ministry. We can't think of what it would be without it, but we also know that we have to be, <laughs> realize that we're not gonna be here all the time. The Adventist Church is a very beautiful place when you're blind because there's this guy called Randy and he plays a trombone, I think, or trumpet. Anyway, he's really treated well at his churches too. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, we, we treat them just like sighted people. Yes. You know, it's nice to see you today or, you know, if they have a little blind joke they'll tell us. You know, they, they just want to be just like ordinary people. Or well, sighted people. Yeah, the only thing <laughs> they have is blindness. So we as church members have to realize that they have things to, to give as well. It's not just us because we can see. Um, our blind friends have a lot to give to us, whether it be, you know, encouragement. I mean, I, I have friends in the, in the blind community that encourage me more than my sighted friends do because they know what it's like to be under stress all the time. You know, and we need to give them the opportunity to, to, to give back to society as well. Blind people on a whole are very lonely. Um, they're marginalized a lot of times. So we hope for the future that it'll just continue to grow and maybe spread to other areas too. Maybe other people will take up the cause in some of the other provinces even. <laughs>